Hi, it's Dwyer. It is May 6, 2024. <clears throat> Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Short video, let's just talk a couple of points of basketball here. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let's just mention what should be obvious to everyone involved. You have the defending champion Denver Nuggets. Right, folks? They're top of the food chain right now. Somehow, they're getting the shortest odds in the Western Conference right now. I need for folks to understand that Game 2 is an existentialist game for them. If they lose Game 2 against the Minnesota Timberwolves, folks, you can cross them off your list. Right now, I'm a system better at this time of year, so I'm going to put money, believe it or not, on the Nuggets uh, because you're getting them at better than a plus 200 to win the Western Conference, and I already have money on the T-Wolves, right? Um, have money on both sides, but I have more expected winnings on the T-Wolves. So for me, this bet makes itself, right? I'm on the side of the Nuggets. But understand, folks, the Nuggets are up against it. Let's talk about some reasons why. The first has to be the fact that both Michael Porter, and understand Porter has a leg condition that um, causes him at times to have a drop foot, right? Great player, but understand he slid in the draft for a reason, right? He has had back problems. He also has this drop foot problem that's actually medically related, right? He played 40 minutes in game one, 40. Joker played 40 minutes in game one. Understand, the guy sticking Joker, Rudy Gobert, is a future Hall of Famer. He's a three-time defensive player of the year. If you're someone who hopes that Joker does well, Rudy Gobert is the person you wouldn't want to be the guy sticking him. Right, Rudy is the worst person in the league to be sticking Joker. Right, so Joker, 40 minutes, he had to work incredibly hard. Let's talk about the Minnesota side of the play. Right, now I'm telling you, if Denver loses, folks, as highly thought of as they are, they're out for the seat for the series because they've already lost the game at home. <clears throat> Anthony Edwards had a great game one. I'm expecting him to revert to the mean. But look for what's structural, and it's striking on this team. Edwards, who, by the way, um, he's not Jordan, right? I'm from the Jordan era. You're not going to convince me of that. But Edwards does have a better handle than Jordan. Right? Watch Edwards closely. He trusts his handle. I'm not sure if Jordan trusted his handle. Right? But more importantly, Edwards, who really is, um, you know, an offensive juggernaut for them, hits more than 50, excuse me, hits more than 80% of his free throws. In other words, if Minnesota has a lead late and Edwards has the ball, you can't foul him. It's worse than that. Carl Anthony Towns, and understand, this is the big man who's a spectacular shooter. Right? He hit more than 40% of his threes. This is an anomaly. Right? Well, Towns is that big man who also hits his free throws. Right, Towns hit 87% of his free throws over the course of the year. But for me personally, since I'm looking for structural edges, not the young guy blowing up in game one who might not be able to sustain that, 
I'm looking for structural edges where the team always has an advantage. Understand if the game is close and the T-Wolves throw the ball in to point guard Mike Connolly. Connolly not only has one of the best handles in the game, but Connolly hits more than 90% of his free throws. At least he did this last season. Right, so I just named three guys who are probably the most likely to have the ball at the end of the game for the T-Wolves. Right, Edwards, Towns, and Connolly. And each of them is above 80% from the free throw line. Folks, that's a problem. Understand, too, Minnesota can throw two guys at Joker at the same time. Gobert and Towns. And there's no answer that the Nuggets can give. Right? It's not like they're going to take DeAndre Jordan off the bench and not suffer a hit from the free throw line and in terms of range. Right? Joker really is on his own against these two guys. Minnesota just has too much height <clears throat> at this point. So, and understand, I have futures money on Denver already. Right? I'm someone who fully expects Joker to win the MVP. <clears throat> but the Vegas line right now is kidding itself. If the Nuggets go down 0-2 after two home games, they're done. They're not going to win 4 of 5 against these Minnesota Timberwolves. If you want a constant, folks, it's Minnesota's defense. This is one of the best defensive teams in the league, right? Let's talk about the next round of the playoffs. <clears throat> now, I'm a big believer in OKC. But I don't think OKC has enough to beat the Minnesota Timberwolves, who were the three seed. In other words, if you're a T-Wolves fan, you're dangerously close to the NBA Finals. Right? There is an open question on the Dallas Mavericks. I'll concede that. Right? But understand, the real heart and soul of the Mavericks when the game is on the line is not Luka. It's the other guy, Kyrie Irving. Right? A lot of that series would depend on Kyrie, who in the past has had a year where he was 40, 50, 90. Right? It would depend on Kyrie getting looks and getting shots. I would argue, though, that Denver is not as well put together as the Minnesota Timberwolves. Right? If you're looking at a dark horse right here to take the Western Conference, I'm telling you the T-Wolves are much closer than you think. Now let's talk about the Eastern Conference. You know, I believe there's a Goliath in the room, but there is a fact you need to know about beyond Porzingis' injury, which I think they're covering up. And that fact is that, as haphazard as the Cleveland Cavaliers have looked this season, as haphazard as they looked in the first half of a Game 7, against the Magic, right? The Magic come in and the Magic are up big. Big in the first half of the Game 7. As it was, they go to halftime, the Magic are something like double digit up, right? 10 points up or something. Just to understand, as high risk as the Cavaliers have looked, they're high variance to the point where, and it's a stat you need to know, they played Boston three times in the regular season. Believe it or not, the Cavaliers won all three games. Right now, I don't like the way the Cavaliers are set up. They really ride or die 
on Donovan Mitchell. Right? You get the feeling if Mitchell goes out there and scores 25 points, the Cavs are sunk. Right? You need for Mitchell really to be up around 30 and to be driving down the lane. His game has him driving down the lane and, you know, throwing underhand shots up against big men. That's how perilous the Cav offense is. But the Cavs are an elite defensive team. I think Tatum and Brown have an easy path to the NBA Finals. Just to understand, as we head into the second round of the playoffs, Boston still hasn't figured out a way to beat this Cleveland Cavalier team. Right? If Boston comes out and loses game one, I don't see it happening, but if they lose game one at home, like the Nuggets just did, the defending champs just did, there should be panic in Boston because that will be the fourth straight game where the Cavaliers have beaten them. Food for thought, I think Boston comes out of the East. I think the Nuggets are up against it, right? If they lose game two, folks, I'm going to devote my betting resources elsewhere. I'll consider that to be the end of their reign. Understand, game two for the Nuggets is really a game seven against the Timberwolves. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let me also make a point too. A viewer corrected me here and I want to acknowledge it. I was talking about Anthony Edwards and the comparisons to Jordan. And I argued that Jordan, by the time he was Edwards' age, had already won a Defensive Player of the Year. Someone here corrected me, because Jordan, of course, did spend three years at North Carolina. Right? They pointed out that, in fact, Edwards is younger than Jordan was when Jordan won Defensive Player of the Year. Right? Fair enough. I stand corrected. Edwards is a tremendous player who can take over games. I thought it was striking on the TNT telecast when uh, a very good former friend of Jordan's, they had a falling out, Charles Barkley, right? A guy who played with Jordan, um, you know, on things like the Dream Team, for example, right? This is a hardcore friend. Um, he didn't want to say it on the telecast, but it was clear that um, after the game, when he was talking about Edwards, who he called that man, that he thought that Edwards was playing at a Jordan level, right? Understand, when I say a Jordan level, I mean the highest level possible, right? So keep an eye on Anthony Edwards, but realize that like Jordan, Edwards hits over 80% of his free throws. Just understand that. He did this season. Right? Understand, if Minnesota gets out to a lead and you have to start fouling guys and they throw the ball into Mike Connolly, just understand, Connolly hit more than 90% of his free throws for the year. Right? Even Rudy Gobert, a guy who's a defensive wizard, hit more than 60% of his free throws, which, let's face it, for big men, think Russell, think Chamberlain, think Shaq, is decent, right? So structurally, Minnesota is advanced, right? If they win game two against the defending champions, I think that's the end of Denver's reign. And understand, I'm someone who believes Joker should have won the MVP last year, that Joker should be working on his fourth consecutive MVP, those are